Kristen Oaks White and I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for this week in Louisiana agriculture. The only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Anyone who runs a farm knows that it is made from the ground up. One small farm in North Louisiana is taking that seriously and literally. As Twyla's Nemo Lawson tells us, De La Terre Farms is focused firmly on the ground they're growing, finding fertile soil in a new area. Last year we were having storms. Donna Isaacs is giving a tour of Delaterre Farms here in Eros, Louisiana. You wouldn't think it would take long to cover this small farm, but there's a lot going on. From poultry to pigs, greens and flowers, there's one thing that connects them all. Delaterre means from the earth and the soil is something Isaacs takes seriously. Because it nurtures us. Uh, if we can build the soil and, and, and repair the soil, basically, then all the nutrients, all the vitamins, all the things that our bodies need will be provided through the soil. State conservationist Chad Kaser is on the tour today. He says the NRCS is standing by to help farmers just like Isaacs to get off the ground and keep growing. All the other conservation practices that are available to large-scale agriculture are also available down to the, the smallest scale producer on a tenth of an acre. Dexter Sapp has worked with Isaacs for a long time and says while this area can be challenging to farm, those who invest the time can be greatly rewarded. This is what Donna is doing is a model to show people what farmers, small-scale farmers can do and it, it can be done anywhere but just have to have a drive, determination, can-do spirit, and Donna exemplifies all of that. Fifteen minutes away from Delaterre, the products from the earth in Eros arrive for his temple in West Monroe, a spiritually themed restaurant that wants the most divine produce possible. Owner Dana Milford says her customer base is hungry for what Isaacs has to offer. This truly farm-to-table partnership is part of a growing trend of consumers that care about what happens at the farm as well as their fork. It's been fun because I've introduced a lot of people to vegetables they had never heard of nor had, and now they know them and they like them, and so that's been a good thing. Back at the farm, one of Isaac's workers is getting the ground ready for another crop that sits on a table nearby. It's part of the cycle of life she wants to keep in perpetuity. You know, we said if we get to 200 families, we're good. It's all about community. That's, that's where we're comfortable. If I can serve four or five restaurants and a couple hundred families, then I'm, I'm really happy. We can make a decent livelihood and we know people are getting really good food. Now, as you saw, Delaterre Farms has a diverse array of agriculture from row crops to fruits and vegetables to animal agriculture, but it all comes back to the name Delaterre Farms of the Earth. And that's literally true here as this rich soil is the careful product of their cultivation methods. That is hopefully not only the start of what they grow here, but of something new for this rural community. Reporting from Eros, Louisiana, I'm Neil Malasson. You can try their products for yourself if you're in the West Monroe area. We'll link you over to them on our website at twilighttv.org. Well, the town of Ville Platte, Louisiana, ranks as one of the bottom five communities in the country when it comes to slow internet speeds. That's according to the website highspeedinternet.com, which conducted the study last year. That's why Louisiana 5th District Congresswoman Julia Letlow is proud she and members of the House Ag Committee marked up a bipartisan bill to improve broadband in rural areas across the country. The Broadband for Rural America Act would provide $43 billion to expand broadband into underserved and unserved areas over the next eight years. Congresswoman Letlow says she saw firsthand the need for high-speed internet in her district. I was working in higher education during the pandemic and we had students that had to go to McDonald's in order to complete their coursework and so I know how important broadband is for our district. It, roughly 350,000 people in Louisiana are without rural broadband. I mean, when you add that up, that's the cities of Monroe, Alexandria, and Shreveport combined. And so that's just a huge deficit for our state when you want to talk about economic development, health care, education. Rural broadband is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. The Delta Regional Authority is also working to learn where the needs are greatest when it comes to broadband in Louisiana. The DRA is conducting a speed test survey of the state to find where internet speeds are slowest and where broadband internet 
is not available at all. You can help by taking the speed test. You'll find a link on our website at twilighttv.org. Well, moving from broadband to beer, that might sound like a segue from the previous story to this one, but really it's the transition the subjects of this next story made in their careers. Yeah, Brett Dunham and his brother Ryan used to be the guys who fixed the network and computers we use to make Twyla. Now they're brewing up beer that's doggone good. A cold beer is what many a farmer will enjoy during the dog days of summer. Brett Dunham, co-owner of Le Chien Brewing Company in Denham Springs, knows it's the farmers who provide him the grains and hops and other ingredients he needs to brew beer. The possibilities of craft beer are endless. Like the beer that we made today has hibiscus flowers in it. And it's uh, you get that, that beautiful pink color of, of the beer and you get a nice floral note to it and a light wheat beer. You know, we got herbs growing in the and the flower beds out here we can pick and put in the food and our beer and whatever we decide to do. One thing Dunham did decide to do early on after opening in October was team up with this guy, Brad Stewart, a cattleman from Tanchapaho Parish. You see, when Dunham makes beer, he's left with all of this spent grain, grain that still has sugar and protein in it. So Dunham loads it into Stewart's truck to feed his 20 head of cattle. They said it's the best thing you can get, you know, like better than sliced bread if you can get it because it's really good for the cow. Nutritious, a lot of protein, a lot of other nutrients that the cows need. You know, it's, it's just it's just a good grain to give to cows. Stewart says it keeps his cattle, quote, butterball fat during the winter. These animals need to eat, and I have yet to find an animal that won't eat it. Chickens eat it, goats eat it, pigs eat it, cows eat it. I haven't tried it on horses, but I'm sure they would eat it. It's uh, really a great product. The products that are Dunham's focus are the beer and the atmosphere. There's a disco ball overhead, but because this building is an old oil change garage with a pit, there's something below as well. When you're standing at the bar, you can look down and see the tanks that the beer that you're pouring out of these taps, the, you can see the tanks that they're coming out of, and they're all lit up and they're directly under your feet. It's a very cool experience that we would have never thought to, to do if if the building wasn't already here. What's also here is a huge patio where it's easy to spread out, let the children play, and bring your furry friend. Le Chien does mean the dog in French. A lot of craft beer people are dog people as well. We're big dog people. Um, we wanted to tie that in somehow. We love our Louisiana Cajun heritage, and we wanted to pay homage to that, I guess, and, and um, we feel like it's kind of a shame that the language has died out so fast. So we kind of wanted to bring that up a little bit. Le Champ Brewing is open three days a week, but brewing beer every day. By the way, I know we did not show Ryan in that story. We're going to go back in the coming weeks to showcase his pie-eyed food truck, which serves up breakfast and dinner artisan hand pies. And I, I didn't get to try any of the hand pies this go round, but I did have maybe one or two, maybe three beers. Shocker. Uh, I know. Um, the hibiscus wheat beer was absolutely amazing. It's about the color of your jacket there. Like Pepto? Well, a little bit darker. A little bit darker than Pepto, but... <laughs> Thinner oh than Pepto, yeah. Pepto too. <laughs> and a lot better for your insides too in a lot of ways, but really it was so good. We'll have to go there like on a twilight outing sometimes. Okay. When you think of a college classroom today, you may think of a virtual setting or maybe an auditorium style room full of laptops and eager students. At Louisiana Tech, there's a low-tech classroom that does not have a single screen, but it is filled with students learning to process livestock. This week, Twyla's Carl Wiggers takes us to the Louisiana Tech Meat Lab, a hands-on classroom shaping the next generation of butchers, cattlemen, veterinarians, and much more. Student and teacher, hand-in-hand, -hand, cutting, slicing, packaging, stamping. Learning is what's happening here in the Louisiana Tech Meat Lab. This is a hands-on learning experience that they get from coming to the meat lab. Gordon Rieger runs the meat lab on the south campus of Louisiana Tech. He says this lab is a training ground for students pursuing much more than a job in the world of animal science. It incorporates all the students. So we have forestry students, ag education students, animal science, pre-veterinary students. They get to cut meat. They get to feel how muscles are being you know, how they feel when you go to cut and do surgeries. Ag education students get to learn the anatomy parts so that they can teach their FFA classes and ag classes that they're going to be teaching. That's what I like to see. I like to see these students get in here, get their hands on, get that time in here built up so that they have that to work with when they go out. 
They also get the availability of work with people they like. And that's what attracted Truett Bankston. In fact, he changed his major to pre-vet after spending time here on the South Campus. And it really made me want to switch. I enjoyed the people out here a lot more. The farm, the faculty and staff here and students all like it's a family. They uplift you. Bankston says he's learning more than just how to cut up this steer. I'm learning a lot. It's not as much about the meat, but I'm learning how the real world is on the cutting floor. If I make a mistake, because I'm only six months into this, I know that he might be upset, but he's not going to get mad at me. So it's a safe environment to learn how to make these cuts, and I'm going to be able to learn from that mistake. Students also use this space for research to help the producers back on the farm. Molly Dickens is another pre-vet student working on a team analyzing the animals that come in and the meat that goes out. She says it's all about helping the farmers raise better livestock. Okay, what did y'all do to get these steers to 18 months? What kind of feed did you put them on? How long they've been on and off of feed? And we like to look at grain because grain helps, helps make a really good carcass and a really good quality grade. And we're seeing what people are doing right and what people are doing wrong and generally trying to just give an overall idea of what's gonna create the best product for our producers. We're trying to get information that we can give back to the producers so that they can take back to their consumers who are buying these products and say, all right, we got a thousand pound animal. This is how much, you know, approximate meat you're gonna get off of it. This is how much, what it maybe grades out, you know, so they can use that as a tool to promote themselves and promote the industry. Funding for the Louisiana Tech Meat Lab comes mostly from the patronage of alumni and farmers and ranchers. And you can support the student workers and their education on the South Campus by buying from the farm store on campus or having your animals processed there. But fair warning, they are scheduling many, many months in advance since the rise in demand after the COVID-19 pandemic last year. Well, Avery, did you know that July is National Blueberry Month? I did, in fact, know, probably because of one of your social media posts. Yeah. And I also know a few other fun facts about this little tiny superfood. Blueberries are one of the only foods that are naturally blue in color. And it's that pigment that gives the berries its distinctive color. That's also the same compound that provides the amazing health benefits. Twilight's Jennifer Finley visited Morrow Farms in Ponchatoula, where harvest is underway. <laughs> I'm Eric Morrow. We're at Morrow Farms in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Basically, we um, are a small family farm. We concentrate on strawberries, blueberries, tomatoes, corn, and vegetables. We're picking blueberries right now. These are rabbit eye blueberries. It's been an unusual year. A lot of rain this year, a little bit more than normal. Basically, at the times we didn't want the rain and some storms and stuff like that. But it's Louisiana, and this is what you're going to get. Uh, the farmer's market is a great place to um, sell your products at. We're a small farmer, so we um, really like to do all our things face-to-face -face in retail business. I know my customers every week. They um, look forward to what we sell at the farmer's market, and they are part of the farm. They're part of what we do and who we are. When you spend a dollar here with us, it's a dollar that stays in the state of Louisiana. Um, we. We live here, we um, support our community. We're community agriculture and community driven. Thanks sir, go enjoy. All of our help here at the farm is H-2A workers. Everyone has a visa to come here. They stay 10 months um, and then they return home. If we didn't have that program, we wouldn't farm. You have to have the program, you have to have the workers, you have to have the farmer's market to sell. If these things are not available to us, we shut down. Everything here is harvested by hand. Planted by hand, harvested by hand. It's, if you don't have the hands, you don't have the farm going. The farm that I'm on is my, uh, has been passed down from generation to generation. I am the eighth generation of this farm. It was a land grant from President James Buchanan in 1859. Well, um, my grandfathers and great-grandfathers have planted strawberries here and vegetables here. I mean, I'm walking in the same places that my grandfathers have walked. I've farmed in the same fields that they have farmed. Um, I'm just trying to contribute back and do my share and keep going.
Blueberry season is winding down in Louisiana, so be sure to visit your local grocery store, farmer's market, or roadside stand to get them all before they're gone. And I know that I need to stock up because I have blueberries almost every morning. Now, blueberries were among the fresh produce given away by the Southern University Agricultural and Extension Center at a recent community outreach event. More than 5,000 pounds of food were given away for free to residents in North Baton Rouge last weekend. That's because fresh, healthy food is hard to come by for residents in many lower income communities. A lot of the food comes from a local farm, Sweet Jones Farms, which is located just outside of Baton Rouge. However, this event offered more than fresh food. With help from other community leaders and elected officials, the event featured a COVID vaccination site and also an HIV rapid testing site for members of the community to utilize. Baton Rouge Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom says this event was a holistic approach to addressing the needs of the community. Well, I think it's about time to get a beach vacation in to get away Away from all of the rain that we're having right here in Louisiana. Yeah, you're not the only one who thinks so. Right now, there are a lot of folks who are heading east toward the Gulf Coast beaches, whether it's Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Destin, Panama City, or maybe the super popular 30A stretch of communities, which Carl Wiggers tells me is the bougie area to go. Bougie. If you're heading in that direction, you'll drive right by a super popular barbecue joint known as the Shed in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and it's pretty much just that, a shed. In this week's Ag Minute, our friends at the Southern Food and Beverage Museum share about their exhibit highlighting the Southern Gym. Welcome to the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. I'm Brent Rosen, museum president, and you're joining us today in our Shed Barbecue exhibit. Uh, as many of y'all know, a barbecue restaurant really isn't a barbecue restaurant until it's burned to the ground. And on February 12, 2012, that unfortunately happened to the Shed. But fortunate for us here at the Southern Food and Beverage Museum, they were able to turn the original floor and some of the walls of the smokehouse into the exhibit you see here today. For those of you who've been to the shed, you can see that we have the Christmas lights and the corrugated steel and the floor, and we've really tried to create the feeling of the shed when we did this exhibit. And for many people during this time of year, they'll be traveling from Louisiana and, and other parts to Florida or Alabama and Gulf Shores. And fortunately for you, that means you're gonna drive past the shed in Ocean Springs. And I cannot recommend more the shed for its barbecue. Some of the best pulled pork sandwiches you'll have along the Gulf Coast. And if you're lucky, there'll be a little bit of live music playing too. And we hope you've really enjoyed getting a feel for what the shed looks like and what you can see if you were to visit there. And thank you again for joining us at SoFab for another one of our Ag Minutes. There's a lot you can learn about the shed by visiting the Southern Food and Beverage Museum for yourself. To plan that trip or to learn more about SoFab, head over to our website at twilatv.org. Still to come on Twyla, are cows fans of the symphony or maybe K-pop? We find out in this week's Twyla Boost. But first we learn about some hardworking pollinators living large in some first class hives. Stay with us. Hi, I'm John Fielder and I'm the Vice President, Branch Manager of the Louisiana Land Bank Shreveport Branch. In today's market where interest rates are all-time low, it's very hard to find an investment that can compare to timber, something that's consistent and typically if you manage timber correctly, it'll grow possibly as much as six to eight percent or more. If you're looking for that loan for timber, for recreation property, for cattle, crops, call me, John Fielder at the Louisiana Land Bank. It's a well-known fact that here in Louisiana, sugarcane is more than just a crop. It's a way of life. It creates more than 16,000 jobs across the state and an additional $3 billion boost to our state's economy. And Louisiana's cane families always give back to the communities where we live, work, and play. Louisiana sugarcane, making life sweeter, naturally. Sugarcane, sweet sugarcane. I'm a farmer. I am a farm wife. I am a cowboy. I am a grass farmer. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a conservationist. I am an advocate. I am a voice for Louisiana farmers. I'm always learning. I'm a husband. I'm a mom. I am a dad. I'm a granddad. I am a consumer. I grow the food that feeds your family, and I'm proud of it. I am Farm Bureau. 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 We are Farm Bureau.
Down the long and winding road of Highway 40 in Bush, Louisiana, we found a master gardener building five-star accommodations for what some consider to be a pesky guest, bees. These important pollinators have found a welcome home in the gardens at North House, and Twyla's Jennifer Finley takes us there to find out more about Doc's Beehives, also known as mini mansions for your bees. I'm Dr. Briggs. I'm a retired dentist. I practiced in Metairie for 40 years. When I got out of dentistry, one of the things that I wanted to do was to become a master gardener. So a year later, I got a degree in master gardening, which helps me understand the complexity of the plants that we have here at North House. Over the years, we have brought in somewhere between 30 and 40,000 trees and plants and bulbs, etc. The estate is open for weddings or if you want to have a rehearsal party or you want to have a corporate event. But it's also open for people who come through with a tour like Master Gardeners. And another Master Gardener and I bring them through and kind of review what you should plant and where you should plant it and how you should plant it and how you should take care of it and water it. One of our visitors came over here and we had a typical beehive, which is two white boxes stacked on top of each other. And they said, that's so sad. Well, it doesn't look like the rest of the place. You've taken so much time to do so many details. You ought to make a beehive that really looks special. So that started my first beehive. These are standard beehives. You use them just like you would a regular beehive in your backyard. These are just kind of fluffed up and they look better. And we have North Fork Church which is a church that I saw when we were on tour, built 1770. We had the Edwards House, which would be typical of something that you would see in New Orleans, a camelback from the 1920s. We have the Millard House, which we saw when we were upstate, I think maybe around Pennsylvania, 1877. And then Smice Barn, which was on another trip that we took about 1810. These bees made, I don't know, maybe 25 gallons of the best honey in the world last year. So they're just a regular beehive. They've just been kind of fluffed up and dressed up to make it look cuter when you're in the backyard. You cannot have a successful garden, especially a flower garden or a vegetable garden without the pollinator. And the pollinator is the bee and the bee will do the work that nobody else can do. That's one of the reasons I think God designed the bee was to spread the pollen. And the queen bee, an amazing animal, she lays up to 2,000 eggs a day. Every queen needs their own house and you'll see on um, this queen bee has got her own house and her own little window. I didn't know if I would like retirement because I didn't know if I was going to be busy enough, but since we've opened North House to the public and have a lot of events here, we have beehives that I build, I have a couple organizations that I donate time to a couple of days a week. Um, it, retirement is really, really good. I'm healthy, most of all I'm happy, and couldn't be any better. If you would like to contact Dr. Briggs about his beehives or take a tour of the grounds at North House, we'll have all the information for you on our website at twilatv.org. Still to come on Twyla, it's time for some music on this show, and it's not our, well, no, Avery's singing for a change. <laughs> I will not sing this time, I promise. A brand new Twyla Boost is just a beat away. Stay with us. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. And I could go all. back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Landowners are minding the Louisiana forest for our grandchildren. 
a place for wildlife. Recreation. Lumber for homes. It's the right thing to do. Forestry, covering half our state, all of our hearts. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. You know, Kristen, when I'm laying awake at night sometimes, I just sit there and I ponder the great mysteries of the universe like, have you ever wondered if cows are hip to the latest craze of Korean pop music? You're making fun of me because I wrote this. <laughs> well, we actually have the answer if you have thought about that in this week's Twilight Boost. YouTube star farmer Derek sits down with his trombone to play the international hit Butter by BTS for his animals. And they move on over to see the concert close up. <laughs> Get it? He played the song Butter to Cows. Mm -hmm. Get it? Yeah, I, I do. Well, I, I thought you'd appreciate that one. Well, you always churn up the best Twyla boosts. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> If you want to watch the entire video, we posted a link on our website at twilatv.org. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll show you what the sugarcane industry is doing to protect the land's precious topsoil. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twilatv.org and be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you'll find all these stories and more on our YouTube channel. You'll even find this entire show on our YouTube channel. Be sure to watch it there as well. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.